Welcome to episode 11 of Nerd Stop Talk, where we come to you live every single Sunday. Every single. Every single every Sunday, club. 7 p.m. It's always been Sunday, and it's always been every week. We're just going to be clear with that. So yes. if you have miss not us, missed a week yet. We haven't missed a week. And, and if you did miss it, that's on you. It's not on us. We've always been there. 7 p.m. That's, that's true. Yes. Every darn Sunday, too. It's never been another day. It's always been yep. Sunday. And it's always been 7 p.m. It's always it's always has. Yeah, yeah. So just to be clear on that. So any returning viewers, I see a few of you. And if any and, and any new viewers, it's always been 7 p.m. on Sunday. It definitely was never 8 p.m. on Saturday. No, it never has been. And we've yeah. done every single week, too. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, now that we established that. All right, so so JP, uh, my co-host JP. That's me. There he goes, JP, uh, who is uh, – oh, do you have a did, – did you get did you get a name on here? I didn't even check. Uh, no, you, I don't have a name. There it goes. There it is. Okay. All right. There you go. I forgot to put that on there. There you go. All right, so we're just going to we, – we have a quick 30 minutes, so we're just going to jump right into our first segment. All right, so we had uh, our last week's picks. So what we want to do is look at who was the big winner, who was the big loser out of all of us. And to be clear and to be fair to JP, we go, we we do these, and we might have to look at this JP to switch it up a bit. We usually go by percentages of losses or gains, but when you're penny stocks, we're looking at Sundial is at a dollar, um, and it was down eleven cents. That looks what? like you're you're looking at like nine percent a lot, but that doesn't really count much. So um, maybe what we'll have to do is update it for for next week. Uh, down is down nine percent is nine percent. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's true. Nine percent is nine percent. So um, and uh, oh, and uh, Brent Smith said when we did mention earlier that we were going to be on every Sunday at seven. Um, just to be clear, we do our viewers as. Um, you're not going to be on Mother's Day, are you? We well, we'll 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 have to we'll have to see we'll, we'll have to Mother's we'll day. have to see. But I I don't see any reason mothers invest too. That's true. Maybe we can have a Mother's Day themed how investments for moms. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Mom investments. <laughs> Mom investments, if you will. Mom investments. <laughs> So, okay, let, let's look at who our big winners were, who our big losers were. So I would say let's go again. I think for the fourth week in a row, JP, you are um, on the bottom end. So do you want to talk about what's going on with – First, I, I just want to know if you're cheating because I don't know why I keep coming up on the bottom here. This doesn't seem to make sense. Oh, uh, so Your passion. Canoe is still your passion. And there's some good news canoe, that we've seen the past couple of weeks. With, with there's uh, some uh, good news and there's some convoluted bad news. <laughs> One thing to know about Canoe is that that it is an electric vehicle stock like most of the other electric vehicle stocks. And they are electric vehicle stocks are being heavily shorted right now uh, all across the board, every single one of them. And when hedge funds have billions of dollars on the line, uh, they, they, they do have a bit of an incentive to make sure the price stays low. So what happened with, with Canoe was – Last week or the week before, um, someone sued them after their earnings call. Uh, what Canoe did was they decided that that one of the core uh, one of the the core pieces of their business plan. Again, Canoe was just just launched back in December of 2020, so this is a brand new company. Um, and one of the one of the things they were going to do was actually instead of leasing cars, they were going to have a subscription plan where you'd pay a monthly fee, and you would have a car, and you could turn it turn it back to them at the end of the month, and they'd turn around and and, and rent it out to somebody else. Um, so they've abandoned that model, which was probably one of the most problematic models in in my mind, problematic uh, pieces of their business plan. Just just when you think about what. What it would take to really pull that off? Um, it's, so, it, that would basically just be like leasing a a vehicle on a month to month basis. Then. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and their 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 thing is that 
that they are going to be selling these skateboards, which is the, the battery, the frame, and the motors of the vehicle. And the body uh, has kind of a modular system that gets attached to the top. So you, the, the idea is you buy the skateboard, and if you need a truck, you buy the truck body. And at the end of five or six years, if you decide you don't need a truck anymore, maybe you need a minivan instead, you, you get a different body to put on it at oh, a wow. quarter of the cost of the whole, rather than buying a whole car. Uh, so that's the kind of neat appeal to, to Canoe and what sets them apart from the other EV companies. Um, the fact that they abandoned the subscription plan is actually, I think, a good thing. Right. Um, but that didn't stop some, some attorneys from suing the company and publicizing it. Um, after their earnings meeting, when they announced this, they they're trying to sue Canoe for fraud for changing their business model. Um, so that caused Canoe to to take a big dip last week, uh, which is why we're down thirty percent. I I'm not worried about it. I think it's going to come back. I keep saying Canoe is at least a twenty five dollar a share company, if not not more. We're not until t- second quarter of twenty twenty two before they're expected to actually have a vehicle hit the market. So right ride till. And and also too, I mean, it's gone up a little bit. I think it was uh, the week low it was around eight fifty a share. It's gone up to nine bucks. So it's kind of it's yeah. I think it it was it was close to twelve at some point last week. So it's you know it's definitely you can you can see when the hedge funds are are trying to drive the price down. You can see the short attacks and, and the things like that. Right. The other two, Sundial and and Ferro Globe, they were Those up. Are your weekly ones. ones? Those are ones you've been looking at. The week. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not too worried about those. Those couple of percent down, they'll be a couple of percent up yeah. in no time. So, yeah. Good. All right. So then I would look at what I, what I got set up here. I had on here 10 cent. That's my canoe. I have, um, I, I'm on this one. It's gone. It's, it's been fairly volatile a bit. It's gone up um, a little bit. It's gone down a bit. Uh, they seem to be uh, the uh, last time I read about them. They seem to be diversifying um, in purchasing some different companies as well. So they seem to be diversifying their income streams a bit, um, which is, I would say, it's obviously fairly smart to do. Um, you know wh- where they're at, and I still have a lot of confidence in this one. It was down. I think it's now at seventy nine dollars a share. It was at. Um, as low as 60 uh, about a month or two ago, and it it peaked up to 83. There's a, it, it peaked up midweek to 83 dollars a share, and that's why we're seeing that bottom six percent right now. Um, and my last week's picks, uh, it is uh, I made uh, made a mistake on that. There should be minus 2.2 point. That should be minus two percent. Um, and I, I thought there was something funny going on with the scorekeeping here. I thought no, that, <laughs> I think we found it. No, I, I didn't hit the save button on the on on the on this on the banner. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and but I would, but I do, but I do say too is that like Disney, uh, it's and now let me ask you this, JP, was Disney stock affected by any hedge fund sell-offs? It's, it hasn't gone back over 90 as it well, did. The interesting thing in the elephant in the room here is that April 16th, next Friday, that is when um, Roaring Kitty's options expire in GameStop. And, and that's that's when he was predicting the, the mother of all squeezes will happen. Um, okay. What's interesting is that the hedge funds are still selling off all of their long-term really good investments to cover the margin calls because they're so deep into these these shorts with EV companies and GameStop and AMC. Um, so, so yeah, there are, there's, there's still some burning down of houses, so to speak going on. And I don't, I don't know if we're going to see the end of that till the end of this month. Um, right. So we'll, we'll see. I suspect that some of these blue chip stocks like Disney and your general electrics and, and, you know, stocks like that are going to bleed a little more as these hedge funds get, margin called right yeah i mean and, and we you know we talk about some due diligence aspects and i'll like over the last couple of months before we went on the air we we're talking about that i um i've kind of trimmed down my stocks to ones that i feel really confident in and 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 i think it's kind of one of those issues where we're talking about 
what's going to happen with the stocks in the next several months. And this is the point that we always tell our, you know, tell our viewers is, is, you know, invest in stocks that you feel confident in, invest in stocks, invest in things that, uh, that you're in there for the long haul. There is, and we, we've, we've had some few segments we're talking about how to, you know, we talk about selling puts and, 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 and buying calls and, and did I say it right? Selling puts and buying calls. Or buying yeah, calls it, calls. either way, either way, uh, you know, and then talking about penny stocks and there's ways to where's to do this. If you're really into the day trading aspect of things, there's ways that you can do it to um, to stay on top of it. But when you, you have to look at it from that investment perspective or of anything that you do is like, do you have the you're looking at the, the, the short term play on that and do you have the energy to keep keep on your eyes on it, then do that. But if you're looking at things that like, hey, I can I can spend a couple of days a week on this or a few hours a week on this, then what you'd want to do is start investing in certain stocks that you know are going to be less volatile. So it's it's all about the time you put into it is the time you're going to get back from it. Right. So right. and and it's right now with with on honestly with with you know, knock on wood, COVID winding down, there's more day job stuff that I gotta do that I don't have the luxury of living on my phone all the time and seeing this stuff and then buying and selling it going faster. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. (laughs) (laughs) So I've, I've, I've narrowed it down to these six stocks. There's a few that I've, that are, that are, there's a few stocks that are more of the, uh, you know, the penny stocks that I am more comfortable with the volatility on because I only have, you know, like a hundred shares at these that are like, you know, 75 cents each or whatever that I can, I feel more comfortable and yeah, you know. it's much easier to manage a handful of positions than it is, you know, to manage 20. Um, right. You know, a month and a half, two months ago when, when you just couldn't lose um, it was, it was easier to buy and sell calls on you pretty much anything you could right. buy and sell calls on pretty much anything and make, make some money. Right. Uh, now you really need to pay a lot closer attention. And I'm sort of banking when, when this infrastructure bill, when and if the infrastructure bill, the Senate and Congress has been working on passes, I really think the electric vehicle stocks, the battery stocks, the lithium, anything green energy is going to going to really fly. Um, looking at, at some of the earlier iterations of the bill, it's really looking like a new green deal. Yeah. Except they're, they've renamed it an infrastructure bill to get Republicans to support it, it seems like. Yeah. yeah. So we should have a future episode where we talk about you sent a list. I was at like a Google doc or something like that, where you showed a list of different potential companies that would get some it would benefit from the infrastructure bill. Yeah. 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 That could be a good potential um, upcoming topic too. Yeah. So, we'll be on Sunday at 7 PM. Yeah. Every Sunday at 7 PM. Maybe that'll be the mother's day episode. Yeah. <laughs> Mother's Day special, a Mother's Day, a very bring your mom. Make sure your mom is watching the next episode. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's. What I want to do is now let's just jump into uh, um, tonight's topic. So tonight, so there was in, in, in JP and I. When I was telling you about this a couple of weeks ago, there was a really amazing. TED Talk, and uh, the name of the person that was doing the TED Talk, his name was is Keith Chen, and he's a uh, he's an he's an he's a he's an economist, and he did a he did a really good study on language, and how language affects people doing um, how language affects people's future foresight. Oh, and we get the Daily Dan blog. So Daily Dan, thanks for the like, appreciate it, man. Check out his website. For anybody that's not interested, Dan does a really good thing on uh, on he does good stuff on comics and he also does stuff on a Sasquatch vlog. So he does Sasquatch hunting. So um thanks, Dan, for the like. So that looks like a Sasquatch. <laughs> so so Keith Keith Chen um did a really good study. And what we'll do, we'll link it in the show notes for everybody for to see this. He talked about that people um, you know, by and large. Uh, language that are spoken that have future tense to it, like I will go or any of these, like it will rain. Any of these languages that actually have future tenses to it, people seem to have are, are, are less likely to invest, more likely to smoke, 
more likely to be obese, um, more uh, less likely to save for retirement. Because when you have in your language the ability to uh, have future so, tense, it creates an abstract future. What's that? Yeah, yeah it, 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 it almost opens that door to procrastination. Mm-hmm. It's so it, what it does is that you the, their future sense all of a sudden becomes abstract because it's not present. You're not presently affected by it. And languages that actually have no future tense. Um, and actually, there is a way that even um, Germany and German and, and this is what makes English a little bit different. Like the English language is that we do have like, you know, some, you know, Germanic roots to it. But in, in German, like they, they will have they will say. um um, tomorrow it rained. So they will actually have like in the, the direct translation, they'll have a past tense, but they can say tomorrow. So it's kind of mixed up when you say tomorrow it rained in a way to say that it actually creates more of a few, uh, present tense because you're using a future with a past. So it also makes you prepared now. So if I say tomorrow it rained, you are getting ready there. But if you say it will rain tomorrow, it kind of separates you a bit from the actual process of the rain coming. It's so, so yeah, so language, it's, it's amazing. So, so basically, as I say, it's that um, people who have people who end up having uh, no future tense, 25% are more likely to save for retirement. I got the numbers here. Um, people with no, Future tense, who just only have present tense in their language, are 24% less likely to smoke. What languages are we talking about here? Um, there's a good, so what I'll do with it, like, so there's like, a, as I say, German's a good I'm a, one. I'm a, oh, German has no future, sen- future tense? Uh, German German has, it's kind of a mix. So yeah. let me... Um, uh, let, let me let me pull up this the statistics on you for you. But as as, as we're talking, um, the people that language that don't have uh, any future tense um, are less likely, fifteen uh, percent less likely to to smoke as well. So so you know you know with that said, so the question is, how do you? So w- what can you do about? saving money. So does that mean basically um, it's pointless to save for money because you are now stuck with the actual possibility that you're never going to save for retirement because of the language you speak? I have a future tense in my language. (laughs) Really (laughs) discouraging. So here it is. So let me, uh, let me, let me pull this up. I'll share the screen with you for this right here. This was based off of, um, uh, his TED talk that he showed this, and I'm just curious whether the whether correlation is causation, and um, you know if, if we're talking. Oh, look at that! So future languages show they're on the bottom. So basically, future languages that have future tense are on the bottom of a percentage of rate of GDP. So. GDP of how much of your growth domestic product are people that actually save save for retirement. So you can see right there on, you know, in uh, we're about United States, United Kingdom are at maybe 15% of people's money is saved for retirement, where the further up you get to uh, that have um, future list languages. But it's uh, interesting that, you know, I, I and and it could be completely coincidence, but it seems like it seems like the countries to the left are more socialistic and the countries to the right are more to the right. Um, not real. I mean, not really. I mean, if it's, it's, this is where, I mean, you look down there, Greece is one of the lowest. Uh, I mean, you got some of these, you know, some of these countries that are, you know, France, Turkey, Italy near the bottom, up here, South Korea, you know, Russia, Ireland. I mean, it's are, are kind of up there. But like you look at Norway, Switzerland, Japan, Luxembourg. So some of these are and, – and this is a thing he really did the study. Even if you want to think about that, it's still, as I say, it's not just the retirement aspect but are generally healthier. Generally, they don't smoke. And all these things is because – you're stuck in the idea 
that your future self is not abstract. Your future self is now. So taking out that, taking out that issue of, I'm not going to worry about that now. It's, it's, it's a future thing. So like, you know, immediate gratification on certain things, whether like eating the junk food or smoking the cigarette or not saving your money because of the immediate gratification of eating it now, because the future is not my issue. Uh, it's when you have those future languages, but when you have those future less languages, your now is now. So, yeah. um, and so that's, that, that's the piece of it. Yeah. And, and so, so the question is, and I will, there's, you know, the Ted talk and there's NPR had a good thing. I was like, so does that mean because I speak English, there's no point in me saving money because of the language I speak? Not necessarily. What there's a couple tips that you can do. There's one thing that financial advisors do now, which seems to work really well, is some financial advisors are aware of the study. And what they'll do is that when you sit down and talk about retirement, what they'll do, and this works, this works like 90% of the time, they will take your picture and use one of those aging apps to show you this is you in 30 years. And they'll have that picture of you in 30 years right next to him and saying, let's talk about retirement. And you're like, that's me. <laughs> that's All right. I get it now. All right. This is, I need to think about myself now in that future sense. Um, and so that's what you can do. And like one of your ideas too, is like, look at that from the aging perspective is it's, it's because of your, the abstract thoughts and, and now, and some of these other financial advisors will be asking you, what do you want to do now with your money? What do you want to do now with, and like, so the point is like you're asking the questions and, and kind of hacking hacking the language of speaking English to say, what do you want to do now? Well, I would love to take a trip. I'd love to do this. So you want to start talking about your state of your life, what you wish you were now if you if you want a million dollars. What would you do with a million dollars right now? Wow. You know what? I would quit my job. Great. You just talked about retirement. Like these kind of things are like, you know, it's like, what would you do? I would take a trip. Great. Let's talk about that. Like, so these ideas of like how to hack, those are the two things you can do for anybody who speaks English, who listens, who's watching this now, which is probably everybody. Uh, Cause we're not, we're, there's, so what you would do is one, look at, you know, get one of those aging apps, take a picture of yourself and age yourself 30 years to see yourself and talk about this is you right now and, and do that. And then call your financial advisor, your friendly local financial advisor. The other one is, is talk about what would you do if you had a million dollars right now? Because I'll tell you what, if you talk to your financial advisor and you start saving your money, you will have a million dollars in 20 years or 15 years, however you want to re however you want to start saving that money. Um, don't wait for the lottery. So just simply learning a futureless language and switching to that isn't enough. Is that what you're saying? Is that what I'm getting out of this? Yeah. So basically don't learn. So, yeah. So basically what I'm saying is like, because you know, I, I would, learn Norwegian. <laughs> I, I only speak in Luxembourg because I was really, I was ready to sign up for a Duolingo course. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. And in, in order to learn Japanese or, or, or Dutch, I don't know. Luxembourg, yeah. Maybe they speak Dutch there. I'm German? Sure. Maybe. Uh, but so, yeah, as I say, it's, it's a, it's fascinating. And so, so basically it's like, look at the crutch you have now that if you've been watching our episodes and you're still not sure about investing money, chances are it's because you speak English. So what or, you, know, <laughs> you just don't trust our financial advice. But Either that's one is fine. Either yeah. one is fine. Either one is fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I found that fascinating. Please check it out. Keith Chen, um, it's, it's, it's his TED Talk. It's amazing. It makes you, it, it really starts to make you think about how much stuff are we really not in charge of with our own decisions. And one of them is the language you speak um, inevitably had has changed your ideas and opinions on how to save for the future, statistically speaking. So, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into our final segment of the week. All right. Let's talk about our picks for next week. And JP, 
You didn't answer your email, so I just assume you're going to stick to the last two you did the week before. <laughs> I guess I didn't catch your email. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have another one that you want to talk? What anything else you're watching? No, about? I am pretty well locked in with options on on all of my current positions. Um, I've really switched gears ever since the sector started rotating, and and all the green energy stocks started coming out of bubble stage. Uh, <laughs> I am I am selling calls and and selling puts on on the the positions I have. Okay. So, Feral Globe, I have lowered my cost per share down to about a dollar fifty. Sundial, I own for about twenty five cents at this point. Um, Go EV, just started selling options on those, so I'm still at roughly eleven dollars a share with that, but hoping to bring my average cost down even more. Okay. Um, uh, good. So I'm looking at, so I, I would like for, for anybody listening, who's looking at, Hey, you listen, I'm really, in, I'm really enjoying, um, your show. Well, that's a, thank you very much. We enjoy putting it on. Um, uh, but after that, what you say? I get that. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, what so what you, what you say that? Thank you. But no, um, but one of the things is that we talk a lot about these, you know, the pop culture, like different types of pop culture, uh, uh, stocks that you could invest in. So if you're looking at t- trying to get your your feet wet into some pop culture stats or or specifically some level of of of, of investment into any of the uh, pop culture stuff, I am looking at and I've played around with them before and it's been kind of fun. Um, Genius Brands. So Genius Brands, they're at a dollar eighty a share. So they are truly are a penny stock. They're also an IP acquisition company so they buy ip acquisitions um through you know beacon media um llama llama if anybody's familiar with that children's book so they speak that they they specialize in acquiring some of those uh shows you watch on netflix some of the cartoons that you might see on netflix uh or some of the cartoons you might see on amazon prime who owns those shows so genius brand are the ones that will pick up some of those cartoon uh, intellectual properties that you might be familiar with and also children's book brands. So check them out. That's what I'm looking at. They are a fun stock to play with and it's, it's so check them out there right now. They're at a dollar 80 a share. Um, they are, uh, uh, they, they've moved up significantly, you know, they, they moved up 26% in the last, um, you know, three months. Um, th- th- they've been up, in the past year, they're up 584%. So they are a really any catalysts on the horizon for them or um I other than trying that they're they're always doing acquisitions. They're always so they're the they're the kind of stock where if they have an IP of something that of a of a cartoon character that is you know a, a, a very low tier that you'd see on Netflix or a cartoon character or a children's book. Um, they will, they buy those IPs. They, they basically are an investment, an IP investment company who says this might be big someday. They have a bank full of intellectual properties and, and then they lease them out too. some of the ones they might get a call and say, Hey, I see that you own this brand of cartoon character. We were thinking about doing a book on them or doing a cartoon or, 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 or an app, uh, uh, yeah. We, we might do an education lab on that. So they would lease out the IP for those characters. So definitely if this is something that you said, there's no way you're going to buy, spend 180 bucks, $188 on Disney, or there is no way I'm spending $45 on Viacom, even though I love Star Trek. This would be your beginner uh, IP for all the off-brand stuff that isn't good enough for Disney, right? Is that is that right? Or I'm, yeah, well, it's, it's like I said, like, misfit IP. <laughs> but it's a dollar eighty a share. So these are this is a fun. What do they that, What do they hold that that the average person would know? Llama Llama, the, Llama. the children's book. They do a lot of children's books, so uh, uh, they have a lot of that. And as I say, they hold some some of the Netflix IP uh, cartoons as well. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but it's a, it, this is a good example of a, of a pop culture, um, you know, IP stock that is 
very easily accessible to. Now, wasn't Genius Brands with the focus of a of a Reddit pump not that long ago, or were were they were they caught up in the short squeeze madness? No, I, because it, there's so there's it's such a penny stock. I mean, it's never been over two. It might have been on. It's probably maybe gone over two dollars briefly. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's always hovered around. It's always hovered around like a dollar fifty and um dollar fifty to two bucks. So what so it's I think when the when things hit, they were down at 75 cents. Um and then you saw people dump into buying us like a thousand shares of it and then they went up to a dollar fifty. So people made some good money on that. But yeah, so that's what I'm looking at. Um and I'm I'm not sure if I'm gonna make this a, a long term, but I'm gonna watch Genius this past week because I think they have a um, and because I think they're making an acquisition call on Beacon Media, which is another bigger one that's kind of like them. So I'm okay, curious if one, they're like that. Dollar eighty. That's a good one to. That's a good one to buy a hundred shares of and sell covered calls on, especially if there's news yeah. in the in yep. the horizon. Because there there could, if people think it's going to pop, that's that's where you want to sell your covered calls. That'll make a make you a lot of money, which is essentially what I'm doing with Sundial. Sundial is being pumped by Wall Street bets right now um, because it's a cannabis stock and we are coming up on April 20th, which is 420, which for some reason has marijuana connotations with it. Um, I'm selling covered calls on that that expire next week uh, for almost as much as the, the shares are worth. So it's, it's great. Right. Cool. <laughs> Good. Well, that's it. So we have that. That's all we have for this week. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, JP, any, any, any final thoughts? How much time we have? <laughs> any final thought? How about that? I'll make it a, a singular instead of a plural. No final thought. No final thought. <laughs> Go EV is going to the moon next week. Okay. All right. So that's your thing. You think canoe is going to go... To the moon. Oh, oh EV. Moon. Okay. Go EV or just all EV in general? Go go EV. Canoe itself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be retiring next week. All right. Yeah, sure. Okay, good. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. And we will see you next week. At 7. 7 p.m. On Sunday. On Sunday. Every Sunday. Every single one.